Hey everybody, how's it going? This is uh, ZX Ryu, and today we're going to do something totally different. We're going to uh, kind of walk through some of the equipment that I have here and uh, just talk a little bit about um, like latency and types of TVs and just some other things that uh, I use to uh, record these videos. And so um, I hope that you find these interesting and that uh, you'll learn something and maybe be able to implement some of this in your own uh, set up whether you record games or stream games or just want to play them and have something uh, to go back to for reference and making things in your setup a little bit easier. So with that, let's go ahead and uh, get started. So we're going to start with uh, TVs. That's going to be the first thing we're going to talk about. Okay, so the first thing that we have here is we've got um, on the left we have a Philips Magnavox uh, Smart Series. It's a 27-inch. Um, it only does RF and composite, so if I want to just um, play something really quickly, like um, what I've got here, Mega Man Legends, plugged in, um, I can just plug that in real quick, turn the TV on, turn the console on, and start playing pretty quickly. And then on the right, I have my uh, Sony PVM uh, 1342Q. Um, it has the ability to do um, composite, uh, S-video, uh, RGB. It doesn't have the option to do component or YPBPR, um, so it's a little bit uh, lacking in that area, but it's a 240p 480i uh, professional video monitor. Um, it also has a VRT settings for um, like security, VCRs, and some other stuff. It's got um, just a couple of other uh, extemporaneous hookups that um, I don't use, but it does have those. Um, so yeah, so anyway, the uh, PVM, you just hook up um, composite or S-video using, uh, like the S-video connections are normal, but the everything else, the RGB and the um, composite are all just um, B and C connections, and so you have to use some little adapters to convert B and C to RCA, so I'll talk about there, that. I'll talk about that next. Okay, so this is a little um, BNC to RCA adapter. So you see on the on the one end here, we've got the RCA that you just plug your normal, um, you know, yellow, white, red cables into, and then on the other side, um, it has BNC. So this is the the BNC end of the adapter, and then also kind of just as a a point, these are functionally similar to RCA, um, but they just have this little locking mechanism on them. So when you attach it to BNC, you um, you put it in here, you plug it in, and then you turn it, and it locks. So that's um, what these little BNC adapters look like that I use to go into the back of my PVM. Okay, so this is the back of my PVM. So you can see there you've got the uh, all the BNC connections as well as the VTR digital RGB uh, horizontal and vertical sync there on the right, and then RGB in and out on the bottom. So, um, so this um, this PVM uh, has the ability to do some audio in, some audio out uh, on the line in, uh, but it doesn't really have too many options for for audio because, like the S video connection there, you see that YC input video. Uh, that's only an audio in, and then also the RGB lines don't have any uh, audio in or out whatsoever, so you have to attach like some speakers or something to that uh, in order to get any kind of extra audio connection out of them. Okay, now just for a little uh, demonstration of how this works here. So we have the uh, little RCA to BNC adapter here, and so what you do is you find the mechanism that allows you to push this in, so you see kind of up here on top got this little slip that you put it through so you push in and then you turn and then it locks and then you can't uh, can't pull this out or whatever I always want to make sure these are pushed in as well and then uh, you would just attach your uh, your game console the yellow adapter and you would just plug that into there and then you would run your video that way. One additional item that I wanted to note about this PVM is you see this. there's this color temp option right here. 
and it's a little um, it's a little toggle switch. And if you move it from 9300 to 6500, if you do that, it uh, enables kind of like a night shift mode um, or, you know, night light mode if you're familiar with the Mac OS or Windows operating systems where it allows you to turn the color to be more blue or more orange. So I leave it at the, the default 9300 because that's normal blue light, but you can turn it uh, and make it 6500 as well and then it'll turn it to... Uh, something that's a little bit more orange so that it's easier for you to look at at night or uh, this kind of thing. So it's a little bit, it's an interesting feature that the, the PVM has. So this is just a demonstration of one of the cables that you can use um, to connect a console. Uh, to your BNC breakout cables or to like your FrameMeister or something like that if you just want to plug things directly into the FrameMeister or another uh, SCART or JP21 uh, input. So uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later on uh, in another video. But uh, just, yeah, the this is an S SNES cable. So you have the SNES plug on this end and then you just have the JP21 mail connection on this end. Uh, so that's really all there is to it. You just need to make sure that you have the uh, correct cables for the correct consoles, and then you just need to make sure if you're using SCART or JP21, uh, you just have that attached on this end of the cable. Okay, so the next thing to talk about now is the uh, type of cable that you use to get an RGB signal out of your uh, consoles if they have the ability to do so, like uh, the Genesis Model 1 and Model 2 have it built in already. Um, since I've been you know, playing games on the Genesis, I can do that without having to do any modification. The uh, SNES, if you get one of the uh, early models, it can do RGB, but it's kind of blurry, so it's actually better to do um, one of the one-chip models. Uh, my SNES is a one-chip uh, version 2, uh, so I run RGB out of that. So um, I use this um, breakout, this BNC breakout cable from WookieWin. Uh, you can find them on eBay and get in touch with them if you need uh, something other than SCART. Um, since I use JP21, um, I needed a little bit of modification on the on the cable itself. But anyway, so it breaks out into these four four BNC and uh, two audio attachments, and so you have your red, green, and then blue and then black is for the sync signal. And so you plug this into the back of the PVM. Um, and then for these audio, you you know either plug them into your PVM if you have one that supports, um, like a, on audio in, you could use a Y splitter and attach uh, the two Y ends here and then attach the, uh, the single male end into the audio in on your PVM. Um, but since I don't have that option on mine, um, I either plug in the mono audio, which is the left channel, or um, I plug the both of them into another set of speakers that has RCA adapters that I can plug into. And then on the other end, we just have the normal uh, RGB uh, input. This is a 21 pin input, and you take a cable from a console and you plug it into that. So. Uh, so let's just look at a basic setup of how you would go about just plugging this into a PVM uh, using these cables. Okay, so on the back of the PVM now, so we have um, so we have analog RGB. So again, we have uh, red, green, blue, and then external sync, and then on the bottom it says in and out. Uh, so we'll talk about the the in and out later, but for uh, for right now, what we want to do is we just want to plug in um, this BNC cable directly into uh, the back of the, just directly into these plugs. So, okay, so, and again, you plug them in and then you turn them to make sure that they lock because this locking mechanism allows you to pull them in and put them out. So, um, so you do R, G, B, and then sync. And then on the front of the PVM, and I'll demonstrate this here in a minute, that, um, you use one of the sync buttons on the front of the PVM to uh, get the system to recognize properly or else the sync is going to be out and you won't get any picture at all. 
Okay, so we've got our female adapter here on this end of the BNC cable. So I've got my SNES uh, one chip version two down here, and then I've got my my SNES Sync JP21 for use uh, on XRGB without SCART converter. Uh, so again, this is a JP21 cable. Uh, it's really important that you don't mix and match JP21 and SCART because they're not wired up the same way on the inside of the cable. And it's also good to uh, make sure that your equipment is powered off before you start plugging and unplugging the uh, the JP21 or SCART cables because they do carry some amount of power with them and you can ruin your equipment if you don't uh, turn off your consoles before you start plugging and unplugging stuff. So anyway, so there's the two ends of that. So we just take the female adapter over here and take the male end over here. And you just plug it in and make sure it's kind of a snug, a snug fit. Uh, now, some cables may be oriented differently, so just make sure you're um, checking which direction the cables are plugged in when you attach them. So a minute ago I mentioned that um, BNC cables are functionally similar to RCA and that you can convert BNC to RCA really simply. So uh, actually in my setup here, and I'll go into this in a little bit more detail in another video, but uh, you can make your own quote-unquote BNC cables if you just take BNC to RCA adapters and then uh, just plug in a bunch of video cables or audio cables or whatever. I mean, I'm just using four yellow ones because I have them, but you can use red ones, white ones. Uh, it, it doesn't really matter. You know, all it is is just looking for the signal on the wire. So uh, you can go ahead and plug in uh, pretty much whatever you want to and get that result. So there's a little fun hack for you. So now that we have everything all plugged in, so the PVM is turned on. You can see a little power light over there on the right. And uh, here on the front, we've got our choice of um, inputs that we want to use. So we've got line A, B, Y, C, which is S video for luminance and chrominance, and VTR for the, uh, for the extra hookup. Then you have RGB. You have blue only, which will turn it into grayscale if you really want to do something with that. There's an underscan button where you can see kind of what's all in the, the overscan region uh, outside of the visual window. There's HV delay so you can see the blanking interval on the, uh, the sync. And then also there's an analog and digital uh, external sync. So you can see that we have analog is external and digital is internal. So right now uh, the button is pushed out so that means that we have digital internal sync. So, but since this is an analog source, what we're going to want to do is we're going to select RGB. And if we do that, so you see still nothing's on the screen. But if we go ahead and turn the sync from internal to external, we get a picture. So, and in this case, it's Super Metroid. So, it's really important that you have your sync signal selected because if you don't, you won't get any picture. Okay, so here's another uh, demonstration. If you don't have the cables plugged in properly into the correct sockets on uh, what colors are supposed to be on what lines, you'll end up getting some really weird results. Uh, so in this case, um, I've swapped a couple of colors around and yeah, it's all screwy. So you can, um, if you have your cables plugged in on the wrong lines, you're definitely going to get some weird results. So always make sure that you get the right colors plugged into the right lines. Okay, so here's a little demonstration of what I was talking about in uh, a previous Let's Play video. So as you can see, um, the lag zone is kind of interesting where, um, you know, the CRTs are lagless, but these HDTVs um, have a little bit of inherent input lag to them. So uh, there's a little bit of a delay on what you see on the left-hand screen and the right-hand screen. So the left-hand screen appears first um, and then followed very, very shortly uh, by the right-hand screen. So you can see that, that frame and a half delay right there. And that's what I was talking about for timing games and rhythm games, if that's important to you um, for getting all of that stuff to um, be accurate when you when you play games and when you, um, 
you know, are trying to just have fun with the game, uh, there's some inherent input lag there, so you got to be careful about that. Okay, so that about does it for this uh, short little demo video on uh, the TVs that I'm using and also just some of the cables and things that you can use to get uh, RGB plugged into your uh, PVM or your um, just even your CRT if you have one. I mean, if you want to just use a basic CRT uh, that just has composite video, I mean, that's great. I mean, the composite video uh, looks really nice on a CRT. It doesn't really matter what kind it is. Um, you know, if you're really big into scan lines, those will look a little bit different depending on the model that you have. But um, uh, anyway, so it, the composite video looks really nice. And so if you want to play the games as they were originally intended up through about... Um, the PS2, I guess. Um, so you would just plug it into a regular CRT and um, play it that way. And um, playing the PS2 on a CRT looks pretty nice. And so, um, you know, and just retro games look good on, on CRTs also. I mean, that's what they were built for, um, and they work really well on there. Um, you know, so up to about 480i, uh, doing games on a CRT looks really nice. Um, and, you know there's really nothing wrong with still playing on CRTs. I mean, they're, they may be old, they're super bulky. I mean, like the Philips Magnavox TV that I have is like 70 pounds or something silly. Um, so, but anyway, you can still get really nice video if you want to play lagless on a, on a TV and just have fun that way. Um, rather than trying to upscale to your HD TV or this kind of thing where you'll get some more lag and um, just other other issues trying to get the video to look nice. Um, so there's nothing wrong with going backwards and going to, you know, Goodwill or Savers or uh, your local thrift shop or whatever and picking up a CRT for, you know, 20 bucks or something like that. And then if you want to um, go up in higher quality so you're not like straining your eyes or this kind of thing looking at a, at a normal CRT, um, you can look into getting a PVM. Um, again, I found mine on, on Craigslist, um, but you can find them on eBay. You just need to be kind of careful. Um, you know, really check the quality and condition of the of the PVM that you're getting because when they ship them, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of anybody's guess what's going to happen when they get shipped because they're super heavy and things can get broken along the way. And so it's, it's sometimes just better to be able to find one uh, near you um, that you can just pick up and buy and drive home yourself rather than shipping it because, um, you know, it's, it's anybody's guess what's going to happen when you ship something like that. So um, just always communicate with your sellers. Always make sure that you, uh, you know, make your intentions clear and in all of this stuff because stuff happens during shipment. And, um, you know, you just really want to get the, the item that you want and, um, you don't want it to be broken along the way. And so, um, you can do what I did and just look on Craigslist and see if you can find one that's near you. Uh, you might have to drive to, uh, the neighboring city or even the neighboring state in order to pick it up. But sometimes that, uh, makes a little bit more sense than, uh, just trying to have it shipped in from somewhere, uh, on eBay or, or this kind of thing, because you never know what's going to happen when you get it. So, um, just some thoughts. Um, Again, you know, I really like RGB on a PVM. Now, um, having, you know, really old CRTs, um, you know, and then having kind of, I guess, the, the Philips Magnavox CRT that I have, just kind of as a side note, is actually, the I think, the same one that my parents had in our living room um, when I was growing up. So it was kind of interesting to just find that TV on the side of the road. Um, so, you know... You can pick up a CRT for not very expensive. They're really nice. They're easy to use. You know, you just plug in composite video on your retro consoles and you're good to go. Um, if you want higher quality, if you're wanting to record or capture or just not strain your eyes as much, um, definitely looking into a PVM is nice. Um, depending on the size of your room also depends on the size of PVM that you'll want to get. And they get exponentially more expensive um, the bigger up you go. So... This little 13 inch that I have, um, normally 13 inches will cost you somewhere between, I don't know, 200 and 300, sometimes 400, depending on the model that you're getting. Um, cause they have different functionality and they have different abilities like, um, you know, 
composite video, S video, uh, composite in and out, S video in and out, audio in and out, uh, RGB in and out, um, and also then component in and out also. Um, all of that stuff adds cost. So um, if you're wanting to get something that's got component inputs or YPVPR, you're going to pay quite a bit more for it. Those PVMs run somewhere between three and $400 usually, even for just a little 13 inch. Um, you know, if you really don't care about how big your PVM is, you can get some really small ones, um, like some nine inches that have some basic RGB functionality. Um, but usually they're only in, not out. So you'll have to just kind of be careful on which ones you're getting. Um, you know, really look at the back. If you're going to look at one on eBay, look at the pictures real close, see what inputs, what outputs they have, talk to the sellers, um, you know, see what they can, they can do for you to provide additional information because it's really important that, um, it's really important that you make sure you know what you're getting and also, um, know what you have to get for cables to hook up to it and this kind of thing. So if you have any questions or anything, you can leave some, uh, leave a question in the comments. Um, you know, if you like this video, uh, that's awesome. Uh, I think I'm going to make a couple more of these. So, um, I'm going to probably talk about some basic splitters and what you can do with VCRs and what you can do with some coax and, um, you know, how to patch that through to your, your recording equipment a little bit later on. But the next video is probably just going to go over the basics of splitters. And uh, so we'll go from there. So, but anyway, um, thanks everybody for watching and uh, we'll catch you next time.